Locked doors are integral to dungeons. As well as blocking the party from reaching certain treasures with ease, they also help to justify the existence of the thief in the party. But when the DM states that the door is locked, what does he actually mean? We perhaps imagine a door with a handle and a visible keyhole, but in reality, would that be the way the situation would look? In this video, I want to explore the different types of lock that can appear in the dungeon, and the ways they may affect the thief's open lock ability, so that the next time that your players ask what the lock looks like, you can quickly answer them. One must first consider the door. The most common material will be wood, which, while usually strong, can be defeated with an axe and persistence. It can also be susceptible to rotting or swelling with moisture in an ancient dungeon. Rotten wooden doors are easier to break down, while swollen wooden doors are likely to become stuck, requiring a strength check to open. Wooden doors are sometimes bolstered with iron studs or bands to make them more difficult to destroy. Stone and iron doors are almost totally impervious to weapons, and are much heavier, requiring great strength in order to force open. Locking mechanisms may be more difficult to install onto such doors, and stone and iron doors are more expensive and usually installed only to protect something of great value, thus their very presence will give the party a hint as to what is on the other side. Solid iron doors are not as common as iron gates, bars of metal that allow sight through but block entry. These are most common in prisons, and when locked are very difficult to break through. One with truly exceptional strength may be able to bend the bars, though. Next, decide which way the door opens. This is incredibly important, to determine whether the portal can be blocked with furniture or spiked shut, and players will often ask this question. Knowing which way the door opens also helps determine where the door's lock is located, as some locks are only accessible from one side. It is a wonder that maps for D&D adventures almost never show which way the door opens. When deciding which way the door opens, you can determine this randomly, but consider that doors do not often open onto corridors but into rooms, as this is less likely to cause injury to anyone passing through the corridor. I am not a locksmith and my research on locks is limited, but in-depth knowledge of how locks works is not required to run the game, and only some basic knowledge is required to help enhance your game. The main reason to know how locks work is to explain which tool is being used. A lockpick is not always the best tool for the job. Sometimes a lock will require a skeleton key, or simply deft hands and a good ear. The warded lock. This type of lock requires a key to open. A set of obstructions blocks the rotation of a key not designed for that lock. Rotating the key around fully will rotate the centre post, which will activate a sliding bolt or latch. This mechanism is usually housed in a thick metal casing. A warded lock can be fairly easily bypassed by a thief with the use of a skeleton key. Still, this kind of lock can appear fairly strong and is probably one of the most common. A lever tumbler lock has a set of levers inside, usually three or five, which must be lifted to a certain height by a key in order for the locking bolt to move. Moving the levers too high will prevent the locking bolt from moving. Picking such a lock with a curtain pick requires raising each lever to a correct height before moving the locking bolt. A lever lock with only three levers is easier to pick, and you could grant a bonus to the thief attempting to defeat it. There is also less variety of key for such a lock as well. The standard lever lock will have five levers, and should provide no bonus or penalty to the thief picking it. You may rule that a lever lock with seven, nine or more levers is more difficult to pick, causing a penalty to the thief's open lock attempt. A lever lock with multiple levers was not designed until the 18th century, so if you are looking for a lot of realism in your setting, this lock may not exist. The pin tumbler lock may be the most recognisable, as seen in a lot of video games, such as in Skyrim. In order to open, a cylindrical plug must be rotated with a key, which raises a set of pins to the correct height. If the pins are not raised enough, or are raised too high, the cylinder will not rotate and the locking bolt cannot move. 
Each pin will need to be raised to a different height. The thief will need to use a lockpick to manipulate the height of each individual pin. There may be additional challenges though, in the form of differing pin types or multiple sets of pins on opposite sides of the lock. Pin locks are more expensive than ward or lever locks and may be less commonly seen, though they are the most recognisable type of lock and your players will probably imagine a pin lock as they attempt the open lock skill. A combination lock does not require a key. Instead, it requires the correct combination of numbers, symbols or letters to open. The lock consists of a set of rotating discs, each of which have a single notch on the edge. These notches, or gates, must all be aligned with the releasing lever in order for the lock to open. Combination locks will have either multiple discs stacked on top of one another, or there will be a single disc which must be rotated multiple times in opposite directions, as is common on a safe. These locks can be bypassed by a thief who listens carefully as he spins the discs. Therefore you could combine an open lock check with a hear noise check to test if the thief is successful. Loud noise around the thief would make this attempt particularly difficult. In addition, the lock could even be magically trapped with a silent spell, which would ruin the thief's ability to open the lock by ear. Sometimes phantom gates are installed onto the wheels. These are notches which are too small to open the lock, but will make a similar noise and movement as the correct gate, further complicating the thief's progress. Such locks are usually very expensive to install and are typically used to protect treasure hoards. A variant of the combination lock can also be applied to a padlock, but these are normally susceptible to brute force. Combination locks provide a great opportunity for investigation, as the DM can place the code for the lock hidden in a journal, scrawled upon some parchment in an enemy's pocket, or even as part of a larger riddle or puzzle. Combination locks of a sort were in existence during the Roman and medieval periods, so their existence in a fantasy setting is appropriate. A latch differs from the previous mechanisms. It is a simple device which joins the door to another surface. Latches are usually only accessible from one side of the door and are easily opened unless combined with a padlock. Latches are simple and relatively inexpensive, meaning they are common. They act as a simple deterrence, but enough brute force will often defeat them. A padlock is a portable lock which is not built into the thing requiring securing. Padlocks will normally use pin locks, lever locks or combination locks. Defeating a padlock is often easier than a lock built into the door's surface as it can be broken with a set of strong tools as well as being picked normally. Sometimes characters will come upon doors which are barred from the opposite side, usually with a single horizontal bar of wood. A barred door cannot be picked by a thief and must be forced open, but bear in mind that forcing a barred door would require an exceptional feat of strength, a strong axe or a battering ram. Unless playing a sci-fi or modern RPG, you're unlikely to include key cards or RFID locks in your game, but consider using magic as an explanation for how such locks would work. A magical token may be required to open a lock, such as a specific talisman, coin or gem. Be careful with including such locks. It is probably impossible for a thief to bypass such a lock, so there should be a very good reason why such locks appear in your adventure. Due to their sophistication and magical requirements, they will be costly and should protect something of great value. Deliberately blocking off certain parts of your dungeon until the PCs have found the correct coloured keycard can feel a little disappointing to players if done too many times. Obviously this advice is applicable to all locks, but it is more noticeable with a keycard style lock. Magical locks can act as biometric scanners, requiring a certain fingerprint to open, or could even magically detect the face, voice, race or other characteristic before allowing entry. Such magical locks may even combine with a magical trap or alarm for those that do not meet the required criteria. You can enhance any of the above locks with different qualities to add interest or to suit the certain theme. 
Some locks may be made of particularly hardy or strange materials, or conversely could be made of fragile materials which break if tampered with, ruining the lock. While the lock housing and bolt are normally made of iron, the inner mechanism will be made of a substance that will not easily corrode, usually bronze. Of course, in a medieval society, wood is often used in both the mechanism and the bolt, but would be susceptible to swelling due to moisture. This is normally accounted for by the lock's creator, but particularly aged wooden locks may become easily stuck. A lock made from adamantine, mithril or some other fantasy material will be much more difficult to break. Locks in the lairs of large monsters may pose an additional challenge in their size and the required strength to open them may exceed the skill of the thief. If a giant's door requires a huge key, the thief may need to combine a strength or open doors check with his open lock check in order to actually move the massive key, and his lock picks may not be strong enough to disarm the lock. A lock could have a security measure built into it, in the form of a trap. While a lightning bolt or exploding rune can be a fun trap, it is more likely that the lock will have an alarm spell placed upon it, so that the owner will know that someone has attempted to bypass their lock. A lock may also have an additional mechanism built in that will block the lock in some manner if a failed check is made to overcome it. Such a mechanism will require extra steps to reset by the owner, but will block any further attempts to pick it until then. The lockpick is not the only tool at the thief's disposal, and the thief's toolkit is composed of more than a single pick. A skeleton key, tension wrench, and various types of pick. A lock cannot be opened without these tools. The thief's tools may also contain a small magnifying glass to aid in viewing the mechanism. A vial of strong acid can be used to dissolve the metal mechanism as a last resort. Such acid, though, is extremely potent and dangerous to both use and store. Less subtle tools include a chisel, hammer, hacksaw or file. These tools are more likely to work on a padlock than an internally housed locking mechanism. As a last resort, the thief may use a crowbar to open the door, but at this point he is no longer engaging in the open lock skill, and this is a job better suited to a strong fighter. The type of key that PCs may discover can give a hint about which lock they belong to. Each of the lock types has a different type of key associated with it. A ward lock will likely have a key with a symmetrical design. Lever lock keys may also be symmetrical, but are more likely to have a more square-like shape at the end on only one side. A pin lock will likely have ridges only on one side and is probably the most recognisable and modern looking key shape. It is not necessary to extensively detail every lock that appears in your game world. You can presume that most locks will be of one type and make exceptions in places which require extra security or where you want to add interest. Though the pin lock would not be the most common lock in a medieval European style setting, it is probably the most familiar to players, as is the style of lock pick designed to defeat such a lock. Add in padlocks more often, especially in securing chests. If the thief fails to open a padlock with the open lock skill, a hacksaw or a strong fighter may be able to break the contraption. Combination locks can be combined with puzzles to add interesting obstacles to your adventure. And one of the most important considerations you should make, which is often overlooked by adventure designers, is make a note of who holds the key to each lock. I hope this video gives you a few ideas on how to make locks more interesting in your game and helps you answer some questions that the players might throw at you. Let me know in the comments if you have any more lock ideas, perhaps some strange alien locks that mind flayers may employ in their lair or undead themed bone locks. If you'd like to support the channel, please subscribe and like the video and as always, thanks for watching.